Sony ZV E1 has got a whole bunch of settings, and I mean a ton of settings. But if you just got the camera, these are the absolute must settings that you should really, really change if you want to get the most out of your Sony ZV E1. There's two buttons on the Sony ZV E1 one to start a video recording, and one is the shutter button to take a photo, which is fine. But you know, when you have to reach out and you're feeling around for the record button for video, ah, it's fine. But wouldn't it be good though if you could just tap the shutter button, which is at the very front of the camera? Well, with this setting, you can. All you gotta do is jump into Operation Customize. Go to setup and then hit rec with shutter and now you can just reach out and tap the shutter button to start a video recording or to stop it this one is an absolute must that you should pull on as far as i know it only works with sony lenses but try it on the other lenses and that is breathing compensation so a lot of lenses will breathe which looks very very bad so what you need to do to fix this and turn on breathing compensation is go to shooting then bounce into image quality record and turn on lens breathing compensation. No more breathing for the lens. Obviously we'll all still keep breathing for another bit. We all, right, yeah. The next setting that you absolutely must change in the Sony ZV-E1 will turn a prime lens like a lens that doesn't zoom in. It's just like, say like this one, it's a 20 mil lens. It will turn that into a zoom lens without losing any quality. To enable this and only enable clear image zoom. It's in shooting, zoom, and zoom range. Just turn it on, trust me, because it looks like this. This is, as you can see, it's a 20 mil lens, which means, well, you can't zoom in on it. But with clear image zoom, we can just use the rocker, and we go in and out, and it goes into 1.5 times zoom. And as you can see, there's no loss in quality. We're digging into the menus quite a lot. Now the touchscreen is fully touchscreen and it's fine, but if you're like uh, poking and trying to get down to each one, you know, you may just miss a beat. So if you want to quickly jump to each menu section, just press the FN button on the camera and it'll go bop, 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 bop down to whichever one you want. Anyway, on to the next tip and the next setting that you absolutely must change, and this is a biggie. It's starting to rain. Well, what would you expect here? And I think it's dust and moisture proof. When it comes to the Sony ZV-E1, as we're about to find out. Anyway, so the next tip here is really important depending on the types of frame rates that you want to shoot. Because depending on where you live in the world, you may not see that magical 24 frames per second. The reason being is you're in the wrong region. Now to change that and get all different frame rates like 24p, 120p instead of 100p, what you gotta do is jump into setup, go to area and date, and then NTSC PAL settings. So change it to either PAL or NTSC. Most of the big settings, those 120p's and those 24p's, they're all in NTSC. And I shoot most of my videos in NTSC, but there's one huge problem that you need to know about, by the way. And that is if you're shooting things at night and you have got lights, whether it's street lights, household lights, because lights operate in different frequencies, of stuff. I'm not sure the actual science, but I know in a PAL region or an NTSC region, the electricity frequency is different. It's 50 hertz, 60 hertz, and the lights will flicker like crazy if you're in the wrong region. So for me, I'm in a PAL region. So if I'm shooting at night, I gotta change the camera into PAL. So just remember that it's really, really important. Otherwise you will lose footage. I promise you it will be unusable. nice time-lapse mode but you see here's the thing now here's a bonus tip the shutter is still at one over eight one over one over eight so if you just use the little dial you can bring your shutter speed back to where it should be and then you don't have to go into the menu so just remember that use the dial now here's the other big big setting this works really really well if you're using uh, different cameras even if it's your phone or maybe you're just doing something with a GoPro and that's customized the file name Ugh. And that's customized the file name on the Sony ZV-E1. Because if you've got a load of footage, particularly if you've got a bunch of Sony cameras, then you're going to see that C00, whatever the file structure is, but you can change it from the shooting menu. And if you go to file, you can call it whatever you want. But for me, just call it ZV-E1 underscore or something like that. So then when you dump all your footage, you instantly know all of your Sony ZV-E1 files, which is super useful. Speaking of useful, there is one thing on the Sony ZV-E1 the E1 that I'm not entirely sold on and that is the actual mic. Now you might be saying Vic the audio up until now 
has happened to Seagull. You might think, that all sounds really, really good. That's because I'm using an external mic. So let me take this off and then this is the actual onboard mic on the Sony ZV-E1. The direction is pointing towards me. This was the mic and it's windy. So this probably sounds brutal, unless you're in a really quiet place. But Sony does give you this thing. Even looks like it's got dandruff. It's a wind muff, so you just stick it on top, and everything should sound a little bit better in the wind. A lot of people will just miss it in the box or just throw it out. Don't. So you can hear with the wind now. A little bit of wind. Let me take it off. Wind. Anyway, next tip. <laughs> Lots of tourists taking that uh, pictures. Cinematography. Of biggest tourist attraction where I kind of live. Anyway, so the next tip is the most important tip, and hopefully you won't need it. But for some reason, if it's not turned on, you're not going to get very far with the Sony ZV-E1. And that is this camera it can get warm because it's size, there's no can, it will. So if the auto power off setting is set to normal, then you could be in trouble really, really quickly. So what you need to do is go to setup, power option, auto power off, set the temp to high. And then this camera is just going to keep going as long as it possibly can, which is quite a lot. The overheating stuff, a little bit blown out of proportion, unless you're living in a really warm climate. The next one ties directly into this shot. Now, everybody wants the, their videos to kind of look good, the footage to look good. <clears throat> but there's such a thing as called composition, and composition is prevalent in every type of video that's out there. Bad composition, good composition, or people just don't know where to point the camera. So there's a feature within the Sony ZV-E1 that will absolutely at least give you a starting point on where you should put things. So this is in the shooting one. Go to shooting display and turn on the rule of thirds. Thirds? 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 And on the Sony ZV-E1, what we can see on the screen now is basically a whole bunch of lines. This is the rule of thirds thirds basically while well, we could do a whole video on composition this is a starting point so put yourself your subject maybe in bang center but once you get yourself kind of on the intersection of these lines then it makes the footage look a lot better and a bit more pleasing to the eye so yeah there's a composition 101 real basic stuff but at least if you're trying to figure out where to put something try and get it on the intersection of those lines there is a ton more settings in the Sony ZV-E1, and even if you're a pro, there's so many of them, it can be quite confusing. But if you want to make the most out of the camera and figure out what all of these settings actually do, there's a video here that will give you the full rundown on what all of these settings do and turn you into a Sony ZV-E1 ninja. That was extreme. Anyway, I'll see you on the next video. Is that outro sad? Yeah. Uh, I think it's sad. <laughs>